Okay, uh, today I'll show you guys how to use Python to do portfolio optimization based on stock price data from Yahoo Finance. So the first thing you're going to want to do is import the necessary Python libraries. So from Pandas Data Reader, we're going to import data as web. This is going to allow us to scrape data from Yahoo Finance and get the stock price data and put that into a data frame. And then we're going to import Pandas as PD, NumPy, um, we're going to import date time, which allows us to get the current date and then import matplotlib.pyplot, which is going to allow us to graph our stock price data. And the, the plot style that we'll use is 538, but you don't need to include this if you don't want to. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a list of the stocks that you want to look at. And these have to be in string formats and they need to correspond to the stock stickers that you can find in Yahoo Finance. So I chose four different stocks, which are AMD, Netflix, Apple, and Google. And these are all the stock ticker symbols that you can find in Yahoo Finance for these respective stocks. Then you're going to assign weights to the different stocks in your portfolio. In this case, I'm just doing equal weightings of all four stocks because I'm not Right now, I'm not showing you the portfolio optimization yet. I'm just showing you the beginning part in order to get the stock data and then create a basic portfolio. And so the stock start date in my case was 2000, the beginning of 2015. And this was the earliest point that I could find that allowed me to get data for all four of my different stocks. And next, what you're going to want to do is create or just get today's date because this will be the ending point for your stock data. And you use the date time um, module that we imported before. And so just essentially just plug in this code date time dot today dot string um, for time. Um, and then yeah, so as you can see, it's February 15th right now. So next we're going to create a data frame to store the adjusted close price of the stock. So just create a pandas data frame. And then now we're going to put the adjusted close price of the stocks into the data frame. And so that's going to be done in a for loop. So for stock and assets, which assets corresponds to the four stocks that we want to look at in this case then do df of stock equals web dot data reader um, and then stock and the data source is going to be Yahoo and this corresponds to Yahoo Finance. The start is the stock start date that you already created before and the end date will be today, which you created before as well. And we want to get the adjusted close from Yahoo Finance. So this is going to put all the adjusted close prices of the four stocks that you wanted to look at um, into a data frame and this will span over the start date that you already defined and the end date which we defined as today. So this is what the data frame looks like as you can see I have the stocks AMD, Netflix, Apple and Google starting from the beginning of 2015 until the current um, latest stock price data. And now we're just going to show the stock prices over time. So we're just creating a plot um, to plot this stock price data. So this is just the title. Um, and then we're I'm just creating a new variable my stocks. Um, and that's the data frame that we that contains all the stock price data. And this loop is just going to plot the different stock price data. Um, the adjusted close prices at each point in time. So here you can see that these are the different stock price datas over time. So now what we're going to do is get the simple daily simple return of each stock that we have in our portfolio. So that can be done by just doing data frame dot percent change. And so I've created a new data frame for that called returns. And here you can see that that data frame displays the daily simple return for each of the stocks. And now we're creating a um, covariance matrix, which shows that the covariance between all the different stocks. And this is an annual covariance. So we're doing the returns um, 
times 252 because these returns are on a daily basis and there are 252 trading days in per year. So essentially what covariance shows is that um, if the covariance is positive, it basically means that the stock prices move together. So when one increases, the other increases. If it was negative, they would move in the opposite direction. So when one increases, the other decreases. And so what we need the variance for is to get the overall portfolio variance. And this is so you can see numpy dot dot um, weights dot t and then we're doing np dot dot covariance matrix annual which we created here and then the weights of the portfolio so that's just 25 percent for each from what we defined before so the overall portfolio variance is 0 0.091 and the reason we need that is so we can get the overall portfolio annual um, volatility which is a standard deviation and standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So that's how we're getting this, which is the portfolio standard deviation. And now we want to get the portfolio simple annual return. So that's just the sum of all the average returns for the stocks multiplied by 252 again to make this annualized. And so we're getting an annual portfolio return of roughly 46%. So now we're just going to show the expected annual return volatility and variance. And so this is just creating the different variables for the variance, volatility, and then return. And we're printing all of these variables. So you can see the portfolio expected annual return is 46%. Annual volatility is 30% and then annual variance is 9%. And that's based on the portfolio that we created before which has equal weightings of four stocks. So now I'm going to show you how to use Pi portfolio optimization um, that package to do portfolio optimization and that means you don't have to choose the weightings it's going to choose it for you and do the optimal weighting of each stock. So you're going to do pip install Pi portfolio optimization and that's going to run and then once that's created you'll have installed the necessary um, module um, and then from this from pi portfolio opt we're going to import these different modules so essentially just copy this code into your own uh, python script because you need this so we're going to import efficient frontier so we can create the efficient frontier um, and basically all of these are in order for us to optimize our portfolio using the efficient frontier. So now we'll get on to the portfolio optimization. So we're calculating mu, which is the average expected return based on our portfolio that we have of the four stocks that we created before. And this is the sample covariance based on the stocks that we have. So just define these as mu and s. You can define it however you want, but this is just an easy way to define them. And then now we're going to optimize the portfolio for the maximum Sharpe ratio. And what Sharpe ratio is, is basically returns over volatility. So it maximizes your return based on a given volatility that you want. So you want to create the efficient frontier object based using the efficient frontier um, module that we imported. So you plug in your mu s and then the weight bounds. You can just put this as none or you can, you don't even need to include this actually, but you want to add a constraint that says that the weights of all the stocks that you have are equal to one, because obviously you don't want anything more or less than that. You want to fully um, weight all of your stocks in your portfolio, but they can't be greater than one for the total weights, obviously. And next, your weights that you want are going to have the the weights that relate to the max sharp ratio for your portfolio so that's what this is doing and these are just cleaning the weights to make them more readable um and then yeah so now we're printing the cleaned weights and the portfolio performance so as you can see for amd that's roughly 31 percent of the portfolio <clears throat> netflix is 33 percent apple 29 percent and google five percent and the expected annual return is 51.8% with a volatility of 33.6%. So if we go back and see how this 
relates to our past portfolio where we just did 25% allocation to each stock, we can see that we were able to increase our annual return um, by a relatively good margin with but with only increasing volatility by a bit, only 3%. So that's not too bad. So according to the Pi Portfolio Optimization Package, this is what is the best um, portfolio based on the stocks that you input. And so now we're going to get the discrete allocation of each share per stock. So what this shows is the number of shares of each stock that you have in your portfolio to correspond to these weightings. So um, I'm just going to skip over these. You just want to add these. This is just getting the latest price based on your data frame. And then the weights are the cleaned weights, which is the same as what we had before up here. Um, and then this is the discrete allocation. So you're just going to create an object for discrete allocation based on the weights, the latest prices, which you created here, and then a total portfolio value. You can change this to be whatever you want. I put it as $50,000. And this just will create the portfolio using this amount of money and based on the prices of the stock. So it's going to allocate $50,000 into this portfolio of these four stocks. And now you can see, um, so we're going to have 166 stocks of AMD, 31 stocks of Netflix, 110 stocks of Apple, one stock of Google, and we'll have $187.25 remaining from the $50,000 after allocating our money into the efficient for portfolio based on these stocks. So now I'll just show you how to plot the um, efficient frontier for your portfolio. So you're going to take essentially all of this information from here, from your portfolio optimization, which we created before. So just copy and paste it. But then the only thing different that you're doing is after the after you add your constraint, you want to add this plotting um, line. So do plotting dot plot efficient frontier and then plug in your efficient frontier object, which you've defined here. And you need to do this right after the constraint and before the weights or else it won't work. I tried it before. It didn't work unless I put it right here. And so that's going to it's the same portfolio. It's just going to allow you to print the or plot the efficient frontier. So these are just some basic plots. Um, and then the next one, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just plotting portfolios with a risk range of between 0.3 and 0.8 and doing 1000 portfolios. So that's just an extra parameter in this plotting dot plot efficient frontier. So it's going to be um, efficient frontier parameter range. And that's just the risk range that you defined before. But that's these two lines are the only new things. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste the same code as in this. And as you can see, I only have portfolios with a range of 0.3 to 0.8 in volatility. So those are really basic efficient frontier plots. But if you want to do one that is a bit more um, has a bit more information in it and you can see other portfolios, you're going to want to copy all of this code. So this stuff here, you can see mu s um, the efficient frontier object and then adding the constraints. That's what we did before. And then all of this is essentially new. This is going to allow us to plot all of the different portfolios besides just ones that are on the efficient frontier. So it'll give you also suboptimal portfolios and just plot them into your plot to sort of just fill it in more. Um, so yeah, you're going to just want to copy this code and I'll put this on the website. Um, I'll, pl I'll put all of this code into the website. You can so you can see what I did and get in more in depth into what I did. I'll also plot put the user guide for this. So this is the Pi portfolio optimization um, package that you we're using. So yeah, um, 
then this is the so you can see this is the efficient frontier with the random portfolios as well so these are suboptimal portfolios and this is the efficient frontier and then you can see on this their star i don't know if you can see it or not um but this portfolio corresponds to the one with the max sharp ratio so this is technically the most um optimal portfolio at least i guess just based on the sharp ratio and this portfolio corresponds to the one that we created before so that response corresponds to this so as you can see it should have an expected annual return of 51.8 and volatility of 33.6 and if you go down here so return of 51.8 yeah that looks about right and then return of 33.6 so yeah that's about right so that's your portfolio with a maximum sharp ratio so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video as i said before i'll just be posting all this code onto our forecast website so you can go through the data or go through the code and see what to do and then you can you can always just um, change these to whatever you want them to be to put whatever portfolio you want of different stocks and you can even add more it doesn't have to be only four it can be whatever you want but just make sure you change the weights when you do that